This video is about autonomous vehicles and self-driving cars. And you should know that I used to be a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed idealist on this topic, and in some ways I still am, and some people would even call me a fanatic. In fact, let's go check out my car collection. I own a 2023 Model Y with full self-driving data. And this is my 2024 Kia Carnival van that has a custom installed self-driving computer that runs open source software. And man, we are truly living in the future. And if autonomous self-driving vehicles make you uncomfortable, it's so much worse than you think it is. So let's just put on auto drive and plow right through this fucker. It, oh my God. In 1992, while the rest of us were marveling at Bill Clinton's saxophone skills in Windows 3.1, affluent Japanese drivers were marveling at the Mitsubishi Debonair's ability to tell you if you were leaving a lane or about to hit something. Within a few years, nearly every luxury car manufacturer would release something similar, but it wasn't until 2004 when Toyota's Crown Majesta would actually nudge you back into your lane using steering correction should you drift out of it. The first decade or so of steering correction wasn't too great as drivers would often find themselves ping-ponging between lanes, but these days most cars have adopted some type of lane centering and also smart cruise control, which keeps you up to speed with traffic rather than just a speed that you set into it. There are currently six levels of vehicle autonomy, or five levels. It really depends on who you ask since this isn't really a formal standard, but generally stage zero means manual driving. There's no automation with the exception of things like emergency brake assist or electronic stability control. Stage Stage one means that there's one automated control, such as lane keeping assist or adaptive cruise control. In stage two, there are multiple driver assist systems at work, such as lane assist and adaptive cruise control. Despite what marketing campaigns might have you believe, stage two is as far as we've gotten for consumer vehicles in the USA. You are still required to keep your hands by the wheel and pay attention at all times and be ready to take over instantly. Stage three is when you can kind of do something else, like watch a movie or text on your phone. The only clear laws I could find made about stage three are in Germany, and you must be able to intervene or take over the car within 10 seconds of a warning. Stage four is where the driver can take a nap or not be present in the vehicle at all. This is where vehicles like Waymo or Cruise Robo Taxis claim to be when spending millions of dollars on lobbying. In my opinion, no legitimate stage four vehicle exists on public roads. Stage five is where the vehicle is designed with the intention to not have a driver at all, so there probably isn't even a steering wheel or pedals. So where does Tesla fit into all of this? A decade ago, in 2014, Elon Musk said that Tesla's full self-driving will be 10 times safer than a human driver by the year 2020. In 2015, he said that we'll have full, complete vehicle autonomy by 2017. In 2016, he said that within one year from then, you'll be able to drive from LA to New York without ever having to touch the steering wheel, and the car will automatically charge itself at charging stations on the way. So if you lived across the country and wanted to buy one of my guitars, theoretically, I could just put it in the backseat of my Tesla and have my Tesla deliver it to you. Awesome. A year later, when 2017 happened, Elon Musk said that you will be able to sleep in a Tesla while it drives you places by the year 2019. And in February of 2019, he said, and I quote, we will be featuring complete full self-driving this year. The car will be able to find you in a parking lot, pick you up, take you all the way to your destination without an intervention this year. I'm certain of that. That is not a question mark. And that's not all. He also promised that by 2020, you'll be able to let your Tesla drive strangers around overnight on the robo-taxi network and make up to $30,000 a year in supplemental income. Wow, it seems idiotic to not own a Tesla. And now here we are in 2024. It's like a real life live action Jetsons. All of those things totally happened, right? Right? Tesla's full self-driving beta is stage two. It's lane centering and some smart adaptive cruise control with a lot of confidence. I'll just be driving along like this and then every 10 seconds or so I'll get a message that says apply slight turning force to wheel, which is my favorite least stressful thing to do when barreling down an expressway at 70 miles per hour. 
Don't worry, baby. Autopilot's on. But just the random occasional occurrence of phantom braking and sudden acceleration and steering wheel jerks and things like that make me realize that the big difference between a stage two Tesla and a stage two Nissan or Hyundai or Kia is just confidence. When an Ionic or an EV6 hits a sharp curve or a situation that it's uncertain of, it leaves the decision up to the driver. Now, when a Tesla encounters uncertainty, it will confidently I'll show you an example. As most men in their 40s do, I bought a plastic child and then tried to hit it with autonomous vehicles on a closed roadway. And guess what? Despite what you may have seen in videos like this, the Tesla actually did rather well at avoiding the child when it was barreling down the road. And I decided that this experiment was a success and cruise controlled it over to the prop and camera stuff. With cruise control still on, the car braked for the child, stood stationary for a bit, and then suddenly accelerated over the child and sped up until I manually braked and took over. It, oh my God, it just mowed down the child. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? I lifted my orange plastic boy back up to his feet and I tried approaching him at a moderate pace. The car recognized the child in the road, braked a bit, and then decided, meh, it's fine, and then drove over it. Here's a really, really painfully obvious question. When a car detects a humanoid object and says, hey, there's a humanoid object, I'm gonna brake for that, and then the car brakes for it, why in the world would it not suspend full self-driving and have the human take over? Like, a car should not ever accelerate from a stop if it thinks that it just detected a pedestrian in front of it. What the fuck? And it's not like this is some type of anomaly. A few days before that, I decided to actually test out full self-driving in public. It tried to drive me into the side of another car in a Kroger parking lot. I decided to stop testing it in public and brought it to a closed lot. And even in that closed lot, I probably had to disengage to prevent a collision over a dozen times. And when I was filming in public the entire time, I thought to myself, this is actually really dangerous. Why am I filming myself driving this thing in public? I'm gonna get canceled. But like close to 400,000 people are using this exact shitty system or an even older and shittier version of it on public roadways. And a whole lot of people from Elon dick riders to Tesla investors are really defensive and full of shit when any sort of claim about full self-driving safety comes up. In fact, last year when The Independent published footage of a Tesla hitting a child mannequin in a controlled test, not only did Tesla threaten them, but Holmar's catalog argued that full self-driving cars can detect the difference between false pedestrians and true pedestrians, and then literally asked for somebody in the Bay Area to volunteer to have their child run in front of his Tesla to prove it. And sure enough, just when you think that you can't possibly hear hear anything stupider than the paragraph that just came out of my fucking mouth in a now removed YouTube video, Tad Park, a private equity CEO heavily invested in Tesla, decided to volunteer his child to play Russian roulette with full self-driving beta. So far so good, but what about with real life kids? The car refuses to move. Okay, it's, it's moving a little bit, it's moving a little bit. Let's send it to 40 miles an hour, just like Dan O'Dowd's test. And thank fucking God it didn't do to his child what it's done to mannequin children in tests. Okay, honey, daddy is balls deep on an option ETF for one of Elon's broken promises that daddy's also hedged with Bitcoin. I'm gonna need you to go help daddy out and go stand in front of the 4,000 pound self-driving vehicle that's being beta tested. There's been tons of both formal, well-funded research and independent research from concerned Tesla owners. AI Addict, for example, has set up all sorts of test scenarios on private roads, including, but not limited to, fooling Tesla's driver monitoring system with stuffed animals and even an inflatable bottle of champagne while plowing through a closed road sign and also plowing through a moving child mannequin walking its dog. And just like in my experiences, a lot of the time, the Tesla will detect a pedestrian, break, and then be like, nah, it's probably fine, and go on to commit vehicular homicide and a hit and run. The reason some of the old autopilot running over children tests are safer than others isn't that complicated. Most fully autonomous vehicles or vehicles that claim to be fully autonomous use LiDAR sensors, which is like a pretty foolproof real-time 3D scanner. Elon Musk thinks that LiDAR sensors are far too expensive, so he has relied on just using regular cameras and ultrasonic sensors. Ultrasonic sensors are a tried, true, reliable way to detect nearby objects. They're used in everything from collision warning systems to parking assist systems to 
rear occupant alert systems. Come to think of it, the last time I had a car that didn't have any type of ultrasonic sensor on it was like 20 years ago. They cost like $50 to replace for the consumer and they cost as low as $4 to make for the manufacturer. This expense was apparently too much to ask for a $40 to $50,000 vehicle because last year, despite the overwhelming advice to not do this from Tesla engineers, Elon removed the ultrasonic sensors from all Tesla models coming after about mid-2023 and replaced them with 1280 by 960 resolution cameras. Like, I actually tried to find a new webcam that was on sale that was shittier than the Tesla cameras, and it took some real effort. And you will never guess what happened after Tesla removed the ultrasonic sensors. Crashes increased. Like, who could have predicted that other than all of the Tesla engineers who predicted that? In fact, Auto Park Summon and Smart Summon are not even available on this vehicle. Like, today, a year after I leased this vehicle and paid for these features, they are still listed, advertised, and sold on Tesla's website for this model of car. But if you're like most people and think, well, surely they can't just boldly advertise something and sell people something that doesn't exist, then you're wrong. Because they do, and nobody seems to give a shit. Despite really regretting leasing a Tesla, I'm still a huge enthusiast for this technology and I'm both personally and professionally very involved with emerging AI applications. Right after this here video is done, I'm driving thousands of miles in the US and Mexico for a giant documentary project I'm working on, and I have a luxurious, sexy 2024 Kia Carnival travel van. Actually, let's go hang out in it. So being a professional musician for two decades who toured who utterly hates flying means that I have spent a staggering amount of time sitting in a car traveling across country. It would usually on average be between 18,000 and 25,000 miles per year. And for reference, the circumference of the entire earth is just under 25,000 miles, which is not as big as the circumference of my Zer, the star in Ursa Major. So way back in the day, in the early 2000s, I'd drive from like Chicago to LA in a straight shot because I was a broke musician. I didn't want to spend the money on a hotel room. And obviously I would have a lot of coffee and energy drinks and things like that. But there was this period where I discovered this little stay awake hack and it was microdosing on LSD. And I feel like anybody who's never taken acid before is just reeling back in horror from hearing that I was taking LSD while driving. And anybody who has done acid before, or especially microdosed, is probably like, huh. Oh, that's pretty clever. So in 2017, I was finishing up like a five week tour and I drove from the middle of Iowa to the middle of Georgia. And that's like a 16 hour drive or something, but it was nothing that I've never done before. And I woke up in Tennessee somewhere to the sound of my SUV banging as it was going off of the road into the grass in the center of an expressway. Fortunately, I didn't hit anything but plants. The SUV didn't even roll. I managed to get off the expressway safely and go rest. But it was right then when I decided that the next time I drove anywhere out of town on an expressway for more than a few hours, it would need to be in a vehicle that had lane departure warning, lane keep assist, and a driver alertness monitoring system. And that's worked out very well for me since then. And it turns out that that works out very well for everybody. So PARTS, or Partnership for Analytics Research and Traffic Safety, published what is probably the most complete and unbiased research one can find on driver assist systems. In vehicles made between 2015 and 2020, it turns out that lane departure warning and lane keep assist reduce the chances of an accident by about 9%. If you think that's cool, it turns out that forward collision warning in combination with automatic emergency braking reduces the chances of you rear-ending somebody by over 49%. And overall, it seems like if all of these things are enabled, you're 19% less likely to be in a collision. That's one out of five accidents prevented. Not bad, right? So what about Tesla? Well, it depends on who you ask. Elon Musk has and will repeatedly tell you that Tesla's full self-driving is much safer than human drivers. And if you believe that, you need to get your head checked. Now, according to insurance companies, Tesla owners get into 22.54 accidents per 1,000 drivers, making it the most accident-prone make of vehicle. Although to be fair, the insurance companies did not publish their methodology, and I do think there's a strong possibility that these are lazy stats that didn't account for the overall amount of vehicles on the road to find an overall average as the 
three safest makes are defunct manufacturers. But I do love a deep data dive to find an answer. And according to Elon's own words in an April investor call, there have been 150 million miles driven with full self-driving beta, which would average out to about 375 miles for each of the 400,000 cars that purchased it. If you're to weigh that against the 736 full self-driving crashes and the 17 fatalities reported in this time period, that's 11.3 deaths per 100 million miles. So now in comparison, last year human beings averaged 1.35 deaths per 100 million miles. Now all of this is rough math since the NHTSA hasn't even required companies to report autonomous crash data until 2021. But when the rough math indicates that full self-driving beta is over 10 times more dangerous than humans, it's pretty clear that the CEO that constantly lies about everything is lying about the safety of his own controversial technology. This popular misconception of, well, actually, autonomous vehicles are safer than humans. It requires you to imagine the worst driver you encountered in the last week when, in fact, despite the amount of frustration we feel on a day-to-day -day basis when commuting, humans are actually pretty badass at driving. Look no further than those giant, crazy intersections in Africa or Asia, and then imagine a bunch of Waymo robo-taxis trying to figure that shit out. I bought this particular make, year, model, and trim of van for reasons other than the super sexy burnt orange seats. It supports something called OpenPilot, which is a project that was initially founded by George Holtz, who otherwise is known as the pesky teenager who jailbreaked your iPhone or allowed you to have open access to your files on your PlayStation 3. Seriously, that's the same person. George has been critical of Elon Musk and Tesla's full self-driving and other self-driving startups for quite some time to the point where I believe that he had a dartboard with Elon's face on it. But imagine this, instead of just making a long YouTube video bitching about it in a van, he actually tried to make cars self-driving systems more accessible and open source. The newer higher-end Kia models can be equipped with LiDAR sensors from Kia, and they also have plenty of ultrasonic sensors as they already have really good lane centering and collision prevention software. So I installed a Kama, which is a computer that runs open source software that communicates between your car and the already existing safety or autonomous driving computer in it. So on one hand, the reason I'm doing this is fueled entirely by my anxiety and need for to, or at least to feel safer when driving on a very long road trip. And so far, so good, I think that I do. But on the other hand, I've torn apart a new car to circumvent the safety system, which when I say it that way, sounds like the dumbest thing I've ever done. Time will tell. If you're expecting this video to turn into a commercial for comma AI or anything related to open pilot, it's not. I actually had a rather underwhelming experience with the company. The overall production and research of this video started in September of 2023, and it was supposed to be out by last November, but Kama sent me the wrong harness. I really needed advising on how to get this running and sort out the orders, and I was advised to post on Discord or Reddit. I'm not gonna get into it, but more or less, I just kind of got roasted. Then you have to pick out and install the software yourself, and pick out the fork and the version, and then pick out the trained model to use, depending on the version that you're using. And if you have any questions, just join the Discord and ask other users, because what could go wrong with that? I'm going to stop there and just say that if you don't know what you're doing or personally know somebody who knows what they're doing, you're not going to exactly breeze through this. So anyway, in Open Pilot, there's a chill mode and an experimental mode. And the chill mode of the main Open Pilot repo is only marginally better than my Kia's own driver assist system. And the experimental mode is arguably worse than Tesla's full self-driving beta, as in I don't feel comfortable testing it on public roadways, and I think it should not be allowed for use on public roads by anyone. We just hit a fucking god damn it. But if you're wondering, just like the Tesla, it both successfully dodged and successfully murdered my orange child in my testing. I spent an absurd amount of time trying almost a dozen different forks before deciding that chill mode on a rather specific fork of Sunny Pilot with some deep setting adjustments was pretty much the perfect level of assistance, AI competence, and driver alertness monitoring for me personally. And hey, you know what? After driving across the state a few times and putting a couple hundred miles on it, it's good enough to be worth the 1500 bucks for the added safety and convenience for my 10,000 plus mile documentary shooting road trip that I'll be on in a few days. And if the van drives itself off the Grand Canyon or something, it's been good. 
So as somebody who drives a Tesla that has the full self-driving package and somebody who also drives a travel van that has been modified to be capable of full self-driving, I am not remotely close to being comfortable using full self-driving on either one of those vehicles on public roads. And I'm frankly not comfortable sharing roads with people who rely on them as long as the marketing and liability are at odds. And what I mean by that is that if I enable the full self-driving software that I paid extra for, and I don't know, it causes an eight car pileup on the Bay Bridge, then it is my fault for not paying attention and not being able to take over immediately in however many millions seconds I would have had to do so to prevent an accident. Well, then, to state the obvious, it's not full self-driving. It's not autopilot. It's not autonomy. And honestly, it's a little bit simplistic to blame Elon Musk or anybody getting rich off of this space because under no circumstances should a company like Tesla be allowed to put these things on public roads or sell them without exhaustive independent studies passing various stages of methodology. We have government agencies for that and they're not doing their job, but that's how you take a step forward in science and technology. And I realize that I probably sound like a Tesla Karen or something, but I'm actually pretty optimistic that if we put a hard stop on this short-sighted adoption of autonomous vehicle technology, it will actually help move transportation technology along faster. If you want to get really excited about what transportation might look like in the future, then we need to think about autonomous vehicles entirely differently. Hear me out. Come on. Using what is referred to as BOIDs, which was an artificial life program from 1986, one can make a pretty impressive autonomous Boyd with less than a few dozen lines of code. It can explore on its own, it can avoid obstacles or collisions, and it can find a route to a destination. It is AI, but it's hardly what we would consider AI by today's standards. There is no neural network or even any machine learning involved. When you start placing a lot of Boyds together and tell them to head in whatever direction they want under the sole condition that they don't collide, it starts looking a lot like those crazy intersections in Vietnam or Mescal Square in Ethiopia. But when you start to tell them to all go in a particular direction without colliding, something really cool happens. It starts looking like a school of fish, expanding and contracting to allow new Boyds in rather than making them wait to merge. When you add in a whole lot more Boyds to that, they start creating a sorting algorithm that immediately gets more complicated than any single program a human can create. You start observing things that you'd see in fluid dynamics. The Boyds start looking less and less like vehicles staying inside lanes and more like water molecules heading down a river. Spending all of these resources trying to make a two-ton vehicle detect a stop sign in the rain when that stop sign was designed for humans is not futuristic or visionary. If, and this is a huge if, if, door-to-door -door self driving vehicles ever become safe to travel without supervision, they'll be traveling from point A to point B at about the same speed and efficiency that we have been since 1920. Wouldn't it make so much more sense to segregate human drivers and autonomous vehicles to their own lanes so autonomous vehicles didn't have to work around all of the human errors? We could just throw those out the window? They could be tightly networked with other vehicles in an open system and it would reduce things like traffic jams because when a car wants to merge in, it could just contract like a school of fish and let it in. You wouldn't need to recognize traffic lights because there won't need to be traffic lights because traffic lights are signs for humans. And more importantly, and obviously, passenger safety of the system would be designed and regulated by the Department of Transportation. Not this guy, not any CEO or company. You've paid for the roads that you drive on. You've purchased the right to not be a participant in a company's beta test every single time you drive your kids to school or go to work. I have so much more to say. I could go on about this forever. I did plenty more closed road tests. I disabled the LTE modem on my Tesla and sniffed the Wi-Fi network to see how much data it was sending back when full self-driving was disengaged. And I did all that because so little is known about Tesla's full self-driving AI model. Then you have Nissan and Hyundai slash Kia. You have Chevy with Super Cruise and Ford with Blue Cruise. Both of those are reliant on mapping out our road networks to improve their models. And even though they're made with data from the roads and safety standards that our tax dollars paid for, and even though having open information would inarguably make everybody safer on the road with this technology, they're all locked up and proprietary. And to my knowledge, the Department of Transportation doesn't even have the power to audit them. 
That's bullshit. There's people way smarter than me with far more experience in this field yelling from the mountaintops about this. And the problem isn't the lack of voices or the lack of concerning data, it's the government's lack of concern for your safety. And far more importantly, the safety of little orange Timmy here. Timmy Trump, bless his heart. You know what? Videos like this have no sponsors. They are supported by viewers like you. And this channel here operates as a nonprofit organization in the state of Georgia. And if you want to see and support more content like this, plus have some access to behind the scenes posts of my upcoming documentary, as well as unreleased music and audio production content and field recordings and a kick-ass Discord community that has a monthly songwriting challenge, then my Patreon is as little as $1. Thanks for watching. Keep creating. Bye.